So once you have your transverse abdominis engaged, once you know how to incorporate a proper hip hinge into your squat, and once you know how to do a proper plank, I feel like you can be safe doing lots of exercise routines on Facebook Live or fitness programs. So if you have a five to 10 pound dumbbell, grab it. Uh, we're gonna try to incorporate it into our routine. So we're gonna start today with a little bit of a moving warm up, not like our first day, but we're gonna drop into our squat and go back up on our toes. So if you watched last Thursday, you remember that a hip hinge in your squat is where you stick your butt back behind you, ride your heels down, and then we'll come back up and rise on the toes. Knees stay straight aligned over the toes as you lower down and up. Now, you might say, Kathy, why are we rising up on our toes? Well, when you rise up on your toes, what I want you to do is you're gonna engage your core, squeeze your glutes, and rise up on the toes so that it's just another way to incorporate that core into exercise. As we start progressing later this week, and probably let's face it, into next week, um, we're gonna start to incorporate more dynamic movements and maybe even some plyometrics. So it's important to keep that core active as you lower, but also as you lift. We'll go here another 20 seconds. I might have kept that clock in the upper corner just to keep me honest can't actually see it in the screen. All right. So now we're going to go back down onto the floor on our tabletop position. We're going to loosen up our spine by going through what we call the angry cat and camel. So remember, knees under hips, wrists under shoulders. We're going to look at our thighs, tuck our butt, round out our back, get a two-second stretch, and then we're going to look up, tilt our tailbone up in the air, let our belly drop towards the floor. We're gonna oscillate between these two positions for about 10 repetitions, holding each one for about two seconds. So if you guys can bear with me and hang out and join along for I guess I'm on again on Thursday, I promise I'll make it a little bit harder and a little more challenging. It's just the physical therapist in me. I can't have people exercise without knowing if they're in the right form. All right, we're gonna do about two more here. And then we're gonna go into our side twisting stretch. Favorite stretch of all time. I'll probably do it every session. Okay, so go ahead onto your side. All right, you're gonna pull that top leg up towards your chest. Take your bottom hand to hold your knee down. Move your bottom leg straight with your body. Place your top hand on your rib cage. You're gonna relax your head, inhale, on the exhale, you're gonna rotate your top shoulder back and getting a nice twist in your spine. The head just goes along for the ride. Okay, you don't wanna strain your neck. If you have pain here, back off the stretch. The stretch is only as much as you can tolerate and take yourself. Take another inhale for me. As you exhale, I want you to think of lowering that shoulder and stretching a little bit deeper into your rotation. You're gonna hold this stretch for about a minute. Relaxing into the stretch. On Thursday, I'll show you how to make this one a little bit harder for the flexible type. Good, one more inhale. Exhale and let the shoulder relax. Now let's do that active movement where we move into our new rotation. So we're gonna put our hands out like out an alligator mouth. We're gonna reach that top hand past your fingertips and then you're gonna pull your elbow back and rotate into your new range of motion, and then reach back out in front of the bottom fingertips, rotate and pull back. Nice and easy, we're doing a total of five of these, and then we'll switch sides, two more. So again, it's important to hold your stretches, but it's also important to move through your new range of motion so that your body remembers you have that new range of motion. Okay, so we're gonna roll over onto the other side, Take our top knee, bring it up towards our chest, hold the knee down with our bottom hand, bottom leg straight with our body, top hand on our rib cage, inhale, exhale and rotate that top shoulder back. Good, and we're gonna hold here for a minute, breathing into the stretch. We're gonna inhale, exhale, let that top shoulder fall, keep breathing. 
tell a funny story today. I said the kids are doing their online schooling on like a Blackboard platform. Yeah, the platform shut down from overuse. <laughs> Trials and tribulations. I'm gonna inhale again. Exhale and let that top shoulder rotate back. And we'll hold 10 more seconds. Make sure you're breathing and not straining. And this top knee stays down. Don't let that knee come up as you rotate your shoulder back. Good. Come out of your rotation. Hands out in front like an alligator mouth. We're going to reach beyond the bottom fingers. Pull the elbow back into our rotation. Reach for it again. Pull the elbow back. Three more. And one more. Not a great counter. Let's skip that part in school. All right, so now we're going to roll onto our back. We're going to do our two belly exercises, but with a progression today. Um, and these are the exercises that we're going to start to get rid of probably next session and into next week. If you have your weight, grab it close by. So we've been tightening our lower belly, and we've been either alternatingly march, marching or lifting the legs up. If you guys can stick with me, anybody who's been marching, I want you to try the both legs up position today. All right? So if you have your dumbbell, we're going to press the arm up. I know I have some new followers on here today. Go Martins. Um, so I'll talk to everybody about how to set the rib cage and tighten the belly. But let's get the arms up if you have the weight. You're going to set your ball and socket of your shoulder on the floor. Straighten your arms so that you're pressing from your armpit through your elbow. Okay? You're not reaching your shoulder, your ball and socket of your shoulder off the floor. Resting on the floor, so we're engaging our upper rib cage. All right? In this position, you're going to inhale. You're going to exhale. Let your ribs fall to the floor on the exhale. Then pull your belly button down towards the floor to engage your lower belly. Once your belly is on, I want everybody to lift one leg up in the air, so you're bent 90 at the hip, 90 at the knee. Lift the other leg up in the air so you're 90 at the hip, 90 at the knee. Don't let your back arch from the floor as you lift your legs. So again, one more time, we're going to inhale. Exhale, let the ribs fall to the floor. Pull the belly button down to tighten your lower abs. March one leg up. Brace, march the other leg up. Nothing should move in your back. In this position, we're just going to go ahead and let one heel tap down and lift back up. Not letting that back arch from the floor or your pelvic rock as the legs are moving. We're going to do 10 here. Okay, make sure your knees are moving in a line towards the same side shoulder. So it's an imaginary line, not towards your chin. We're going to do a couple more here. Make sure you feel your belly engaging as you lift and lower. Do one more each leg. Good, relax. Okay, now we're going to make this exercise just a bit harder. You can stay here with both legs up in the air. We'll do another set of 10. Or you can follow me. We're going to reach that leg out, tap, tap your heel, and bring the knee back up. As I reach my leg out, my back wants to arch from the floor. Use your core to stabilize. Don't let it happen. All right, so let's press the arms up. Shoulder blades are on the floor. Ball and sockets on the floor. One leg up. Brace. Opposite leg up. All right, you can stay here where we just were, or you can go ahead and extend your leg and tap, and extend your leg and tap. A trick here is what, is what I'm doing with my non-moving leg, okay? I'm not letting this leg go down with the movement. I'm almost thinking of pushing in just a little bit towards my chin to help stabilize my pelvis as I go through this. Some people might have a clicking in their back, like me. Um, as long as it's not painful, that's okay. Just know that you could probably do a better job of pulling that belly muscle nice and tight, and that clicking would stop. One more here. Okay, good, lower the arms. All right, moving on to our bridges. So, I want to do the bridge with the arm press and the skull crusher. Right? That's what I want to do for the first set. If you're not comfortable with that, you can just do the bridge with both legs on the floor, or you can do our previous single leg bridge. Okay? I'm going to do the skull crusher, so I'm going to press the arms up in the air. Shoulder blades are resting down on the floor. 
Toes are up, so I drive my heels into the floor, lifting my butt up. So I'm straight like a board, and I'm just going to bend and straighten at the elbows. Okay, so if you have the weight, I want you to keep going here. You're firing your butt muscles, and you're firing your lower belly muscles right here. Keep going. If not, you're just bridging and lowering, bridging and lowering. Make sure you're driving from your butt by driving through your heels. Okay, let's finish. We're up here, we'll do two more. Keep bridging if you're just bridging. If you're skull crushing, keep skull crushing. Good, and lower down. All right, now I want everybody to do this next one with me. All right, so we've done single leg, we've done two feet, we've done arms up with the weight. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna bridge up and then we're gonna alternately mark one leg up, one leg down, and then lower, okay? Hands relax at your side. You can cheat a little bit if you need a little extra stability. All right, and I want you to use your hands as you're bridging and marching, but sometimes they can help as you're getting used to a new exercise. What I really want you to do in this position is you're gonna drive up through the heels, lifting the butt, the non-moving leg, you're still thinking of driving that heel into the ground as you brace your belly and march your opposite leg up. Don't let your hips tilt or twist. Okay, this is why it's a core exercise. It's because we're fighting that rotation. Remember I said you gotta fight the rotation. That's what makes this core strong. Good, we're gonna do about five more here. Doesn't have to be a big march. It's actually more important what the non-moving leg is doing because the non-moving leg is supporting your, your glute and your, your belly. Not supporting, they're firing. Good. And then let's do one more. Okay. I'm out of breath today. All right, so before we do our plank, I wanna do one other exercise, um, and then we'll talk about the tip of the day. Um, so we were doing our quadruped diagonals the other day, so that's where we get in our tabletop position. Okay, we reach one foot back, we reach the opposite arm. Come back in, we kick one foot back, we reach the opposite arm. Notice I'm not tilting or twisting. We can also progress this exercise into what we call same side. So I get on my hands and my knees and I shift over to one side. So my shoulder and my hip are all to one side. I'm gonna kick a foot back, brace my belly, find my armpit, and reach the same side arm, okay? And come back. It's a lot harder of an exercise. Just holding here, you don't wanna let the pelvis or body rotate. Again, we're fighting that rotational force, okay? So you can practice trying to do the same side reach, or you can keep doing the diagonals, switching each side. So if we're doing the same side, we're gonna go to one side, come back in, Switch over, reach out. I'm trying to stay out of my neck and feel the push coming from my armpit through the heel of my hand, elbows straight. Okay, so the tip of the day is planking. Planking is incorporated into any type of fitness routine. However, most people do them incorrectly. Before we go over planking, I'm gonna talk about two tricks of the trade to kind of ease your body or make it a more achievable exercise for yourself. So if you're working on the floor and you tend to get wrist pain from your wrist being bent so much, you can take your mat or towel, whatever you're on, and roll it up a little bit. I'm gonna put the heel of my hand on the mat and my fingers kind of move towards the floor. So when I'm in this position, I take that deep bend out of my wrist and I put it more into an open angle here. Kids are learning about angles in third grade, FYI. All right, so this is a good trick to help decrease some of the strain on your wrist. The other trick is if you have a hard time planking on the floor, all right, you can, I push this stool up against the wall just for camera purposes, but you can use a countertop in your kitchen, a long dresser, but if you come into a plank on a raised surface, all right, you're still working the same muscles, you're just taking gravity, you're not making it as challenging, 
all right? So we're gonna stay on the floor today, but if you want, you can go ahead and you can position yourself so you're doing it on a countertop or a raised surface just to make it a little bit easier. <clears throat> so the trick with planking, as we talked about with the tabletop position, is let's start here, okay? Bring your shoulder blades in towards your spine and then push from your armpit through the heel of your hand, all right? When you're planking, you don't want to have a rounded middle back and you don't want to scrunch your upper trap or overactivate your pec or chest muscles. So again, instead of being here, I'm going to find a nice neutral low back, move my shoulder blades in towards my spine, and then push from the armpit down through the heel of my hand. Okay? Once I'm in this position, I'm going to step my foot back and tuck my toe. So I'm in like a half plank. Here, I'm going to say, Kathy, my armpits are on into the heel of my hand. My belly's nice and tight. I'm going to step my opposite foot back. Notice nothing moves from my hips to my shoulder. Okay, that's the important part. That's why we start here in the tabletop position. So back to your tabletop. Move your shoulder blades in towards your spine. Push from your armpits through the heel of your hand. I want you to step one foot back. Brace your belly. Feel your armpits. Step your other foot back. Okay, a lot of times people will shift forward. Don't shift forward or they'll stick their butt up in the air. Don't do that either. Okay, so we're in. We're going to go back into the plank again. This time we're going to try to hold for 10 seconds. So we're in tabletop, low back is neutral, shoulder blades are in towards the spine, pushing into the heel of my hand, step one foot back, brace my belly, step the opposite foot back, and we're holding for 10, 9, 8, you should be going armpits, belly, armpits, belly, armpits, belly, and then when you step in, don't be sloppy, step one knee in, and the other back into your tabletop position. We're going to practice that two more times with 10 second hold. Okay, if you can't hold the 10 seconds, come back in when you need to. So find your armpits, brace your belly, step one foot back, nothing moves, step the other foot back, and hold for 10, 9, going armpits, belly, armpits, belly, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, step one foot in, the other foot in, I'm going to do one more time. Since I can't see everybody's plank, I'm going to give you a little pointer when we're up in the position. So shoulder blades together, push into the heel of your hands. Step back. Brace your belly. Step back. If you don't feel the front and back working, I want you to drop your hips a little bit. See if that helps you fire the belly and the back together. Same thing if you feel like maybe you're dipping. There's a lot of weight kind of sag in your back. Lift up just a little bit. You'll feel the armpits more which makes you kick your belly in. Good, and step one knee in, and one knee in. So I love planking because now we can start, once you have the plank form, you can do things like burpees, which are those, those jumping, drop down, jump back up into a plank. You can add leg or arm challenges to a plank to challenge that rotational stability even more. So today I wanted to show you one leg challenge, one arm challenge, if today is your first day planking, um, you can just practice holding your plank and watching, and then we'll incorporate this in later sessions. But if you're comfortable in what we just went over, I want you to try some of the leg challenges. Okay? So the first one, we're going to do the side step outs. Eventually, people call them plank jacks when they jump in and out, but today we're just going to try the side step outs because we're focusing on proper form. So tabletop, find your armpits, step back, brace your belly. Step back. In this position, you're going to step one leg out and back, and the opposite leg out and back. Notice from my shoulder to my hips, nothing is moving. Okay? I'm not tilting my pelvis one way or another. And I'm still going in my head, I'm like armpits, belly, armpits, belly, and then step one knee in, and then the other. Okay? You may not be able to do more than two step outs on each side, and that's okay. Do your two step outs. Come back in, get back into a plank, and repeat. So we're going to do about five more on each side. Right? So hit your tabletop. Step back into your plank. Awesome. Find your armpits. That belly's engaged. We're going to step out and together, out and together, out and together. Do not let those hips twist. 
Sometimes I tell people, imagine you have a full glass of water balancing on your tailbone. Don't let it spill or somebody's going to think that you peed your pants. Good. One more on the other side. I'm literally breaking the sweat today. Okay. So that was a good, easy leg challenge to start with. As for the arms, it gets a little trickier, okay? So we can do, I'm gonna show you a shoulder tap, okay? The shoulder taps, a little bit too easy. You can try a row and back, okay, when we're in the plank position. Notice a row isn't my elbow coming up into my neck, okay? A row is my elbow just falling back and then pushing forward. So if I start in tabletop to practice the arm movement, try a shoulder tap here. Find your armpits, belly tight. Take one hand, tap it to the opposite shoulder. Notice I'm not rotating in my belly or my core. You guys are so strong now, this is way too easy for you. In tabletop, right? Okay, the row, I'm here, and I'm imagining a string on my elbow pulling up to the ceiling and back to the floor. Alternating sides, not letting my middle section rotate. Okay, again, notice I'm not scrunching in my neck or turning my body over. Again, this is way too easy for you guys because you're so good at turning your core on now. So let's make it harder. We're going to step back out into your plank. So find your armpits, belly tight, step one foot back, other foot back. Feel free to kind of widen your stance a little bit. I'm not terribly wide, maybe just shoulder width apart. Okay, in this position, I'm going to brace. And I'm going to tap one shoulder and down and tap the other shoulder. On my non-moving hand, I'm really concentrating on driving from my armpit into the heel of my hand as we go through this move. Again, if the floor is too hard, feel free to move up to a higher surface. Okay, that countertop or chair. All right, come back in and let's try the row. So we'll step back out. Okay, and here I do go wider in my stance and I row one arm, switch to the other. Notice I'm not rotating my body. I'm trying to maintain the idea that my body is as flat as a board. Good. Okay, so now that I'm completely out of breath and I broke a sweat, <laughs> um, that was the, the last and third exercise in the trifecta of what I think is what you need to know before you can progress safely through any type of video fitness on your own, okay? So thanks for attending today's session on Beat the Boar, exercises for your back and core.